welcome to the Business Standard Morning Show. I'm Bino Sandhu. Let's take a look at the stories for the day. What the world needs now is people who see healthcare a little bit differently. Because seeing a healthier world isn't far in the future. We're building it now. GE, building a world that works. After agriculture, the textiles and apparel industry is the second largest job provider in India, directly employing about 45 million people. However, its full potential remains untapped as India stands sixth in garment exports behind China, Bangladesh, Vietnam, Cambodia and Sri Lanka. But there is a bright spot almost at the centre of the east and west coasts. The small town of Tirupur contributes about 90% of knitwear exports from India. The government recently said that it would create 75 textile hubs across India like the one at Tirupur. Here we explain the significance of the Tirupur Textile Hub and how the government can get started with its ambitious goal. Located nearly 500 kilometers to the southwest of Chennai, Tirupur is India's largest knitwear hub. The cluster pretty much came up on its own in what was once an agricultural town. The farmers there started with small textile units during the 1970s. The coming years saw a web of small to mid-sized units crop up in this little Tamil Nadu town, with none of the fabrication, processing and stitching work being done in any one single place. It became a network of firms that relied on job working, contracting and sourcing arrangements. Today, Tirupur exports cotton and cotton blend t-shirts, dresses, sweatshirts and other knitted clothes to the US, Europe, Australia and Canada. What is the place like? The odour of chemicals and dyes used in fabrics greets you as you enter Tirupur. And at least one person from almost every family is connected to its textile and garment industry. Tirupur is home to 10,000 garment manufacturing hubs employing over 600,000 workers who make hosiery, knitwear, casual wear and sportswear. There are various estimates that highlight the hub's importance. Tirupur contributed 54.2% of India's textile exports in FY22. According to Tirupur Exporters Association President Raja M. Shanmugham, out of India's total FY22 exports of around $480 billion, Tirupur alone accounted for a 1.07% share. The numbers explain why the government is keen on setting up 75 Tirupur-like textile hubs in different parts of the country. Shan Mugham believes that as the first step towards this goal, the government must bridge the disconnect between the industry and decision makers. He also says that structural changes are needed to give a boost to what he calls happening locations such as Tirupur for knitwear, Karur for home textiles, Ichal Karanji and Bhilwara for woven fabrics and Bhadohi and Kashmir for carpets. Shanmugam says that greater representation is needed because the industry is largely made up of micro, small and medium units and also because it would enable fast policy interventions, which is an area where competitor Bangladesh has been more agile than India. Uh, sir, actually, the, uh, this textile ministry is having almost uh, 11 uh, export promotion councils in working. But unfortunately, uh, it is being witnessed that we have been cons consecutively relegated to sixth position in the global competition because of their poor performance only. These platforms are acting as a lobbying platform for the vested interest to grow who got occupied to that uh, particular platform years together or decades together. So what I, my request is 
that uh, a happening center is uh, need to be connected to the policy makers desk uh, on day to day basis for which creation of boards on the happening center for example netwar uh, means tirupur home textile means karur so the product boards uh, could be mandated to act as a uh, interfacing body between the happening center and the policy makers the other one is they can document the case studies uh, of that happening center which would help to replicate the successful formula elsewhere in the country in a very successful manner the interest in tirupur comes at a time when the prices of cotton and yarn have gone up forcing factories there to work at reduced capacity leaving wholesale shops with hardly any takers for clothes according to industry data from a previous business standard report yarn prices have increased by 112% from june 2021 to june 2022 according to the tirupur exporters association the price of cotton per candy that is 356 kg has increased from 37000 rupees in june 2020 to 97500 rupees at the beginning of june 2022 thus Tirupur's wholesale market is seeing a dip of 30% in sales. Over the last few years, the government has also rolled out export boosting schemes such as rebate of state and central taxes and levies on export of garments and made-ups and remissions of duties and taxes on exported products. The government had last year rolled out a PLI scheme to expand the man-made fabrics and technical textile segments value chain. The government is also in the process of devising the second edition of the textile sector PLI scheme with a focus on the apparel segment. The success of these initiatives is critical because the textiles industry directly employs 45 million people and accounts for 100 million jobs in allied industries. But will the government be able to bridge the gap between the small units of Tirupur and the corridors of power to achieve success? सब अच्छी दिख रही हैं यार कौन सी खरीदूँ ये तो वही बात हुई चार हजार शेयर लिस्टेड है कौन सा लू वो तो सबसे आसान है तुझे फाइव पैसा नहीं पता अब तो सबको पता है फाइव पैसा पर है चार हजार स्टॉक्स की रिसर्च टेक्निकल टूल्स और इन्वेस्टमेंट आइडियाज डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा नाउ अब तो सबको पता है इन्वेस्टिंग मेड इजी एंड रिपोर्टिंग विद फाइव पैसा इन्वेस्टमेंट इन सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुल बिफोर इन्वेस्टिंग about 1300 kilometers away from tirupur in a quiet home in south mumbai a 93 year old man died in his sleep early tuesday morning soon prime minister narendra modi hailed his monumental contribution to the world of commerce and industry palonji mystery's quiet demise was in tune with his reclusive nature mystery who started assisting his father at the young age of 18 diversified the shakuchi palonji group took it beyond indian borders and built some of the country's iconic buildings back home let's find out more about his legacy The Reserve Bank of India's old building inaugurated in 1939, the 1960 Magnum Opus Mughalayazam, then RBI's new building made in 1980, and 9 km long Atal Tunnel inaugurated in 2020. What connects these three? All of them were made by the sprawling engineering and construction empire of the Mistri family, whose billionaire patriarch Palonji Mistri passed away in Mumbai on Tuesday. at the age of 93 his funeral is slated to be held at 11 am today in mumbai for decades he steered the shapuji palonji group which built luxury hotels stadiums palaces offices residences ports and factories in 70 countries the family business was founded in 1865 when his grandfather also called Balonji started a construction business with an englishman called littlewood balonji the initial project was mumbai's first reservoir constructed 
at the highest point on Malabar Hill. When he died in 1921, his son Shapuji took over. The company began doing business with the Tata family in 1920s. Palonji Mistri, who was born in 1929, joined the business in 1947 at the age of 18. The group went on to build some of Mumbai's landmark buildings that dot the city skyline today, including the HSBC Bank, the Cricket Club of India, New India Assurance, Reserve Bank of India Buildings, Greenlays Bank, Standard Chartered Bank, and the State Bank of India. It also built famous studios at Mahalakshmi in Mumbai. The company is also known for building the iconic heritage Taj Mahal Palace Hotel and its 20-story tower wing extension, as well as the Oberoi Hotel, both of which came under attack by terrorists. In 2008, interestingly, the group had a brief brush with Bollywood when Palonji's father financed the biggest blockbuster of its time in Hindi cinema, Mughal Azam. Released in 1960, it was the most expensive movie of its time and took over eight years to make. The script for Mughal Azam was reportedly presented to him as payment for a debt. The family did not invest in the movie business after that. Towards the end of the 1960s, Palonji led the company's expansion into the Middle East. Construction in the Middle East, fueled by petrodollars, was booming, and under his leadership, the company bid for and won a tender to build the Sultan of Oman's palace in 1971 and many ministerial buildings there. Palonji took over the reins of the company in 1975 when his father passed away. When the Al Alam Palace in Muscat opened that year, it not only established Shapuji Palonji as the first Indian construction company to have completed a project abroad, but the palace also became a masterpiece of Indian capabilities to the world. This also provided a launching pad for the group to consolidate its presence in the Middle East and foray into Africa, where it had executed several landmark projects such as the Presidential Office of Ghana, the National Assembly of Gambia, and the Ibane IT Park in Mauritius. Back home, the company also built the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in 1962, the Mumbai World Trade Center in 1970. Tata and the 60-storied twin residential towers called the Imperial in the city in 2010. The Imperial was India's tallest skyscraper for nearly a decade. Brabourne Stadium in Mumbai, MCA Stadium in Pune, Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in Delhi, Park Towers and Landmark Group building in Dubai were also the company's legacy. Palonji's management style and desire to expand globally was in sharp contrast to that of his father who reportedly traveled abroad just twice for medical treatment of some family members Palonji gave up India's nationality in 2003 and became an Irish citizen after his marriage to Dublin born Patsy Perrin Dubash but he continued to live in his sea facing bungalow in Mumbai's Vokeshwar Palonji Mistri's 18.4% holdings made him the single largest shareholder in Tata Sons in early 2012 he stepped down as chairman of the Shapurji Palonji group and handed over the chairmanship to his elder son Shapur Mistri he was often known as the phantom of the Bombay house for his indirect influence over the Tata group affairs Bombay house is the headquarters of the Tata group he always kept a low profile and avoided the media the family is also reclusive even the details of Palonji's marriage is not in public domain Afcons a unit of Shapurji Palonji group is known for executing some of the most challenging and complex projects across the world including the 9.02 km long Atal tunnel which passes under the Rohtang pass in Himachal Pradesh it is the world's longest highway tunnel above 10000 feet afcons is also building the chenab rail bridge in jammu and kashmir hoisted 359 meters above the river bed it will be the highest single arch railway bridge in the world the shapurji palonji group today boasts of 70000 employees worldwide palonji mistri's personal philanthropy always given privately and without any fanfare over the decades has also been significant
हाल मत पूछ यार फिर से स्टॉक्स में फंस गया तो स्टॉक्स के साथ बॉन्ड्स इंश्योरेंस गोल्ड में बैलेंस कर इसमें बहुत तामचाम है तुझे फाइव पैसा नहीं पता अब तो सबको पता है फाइव पैसा है ऑल इन वन अकाउंट डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा ना अब तो सबको पता है Investing made easy and rewarding with Five Paisa. Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. According to reports, Mumbai's iconic Taj Mahal palace was constructed and handed over ahead of schedule and under the allotted budget. Palunji mystery indeed leaves behind a rich legacy. Moving on to markets. Shares of liquor companies have tumbled up to 32% so far in calendar year 2022, as soaring raw material cost and tepid demand have hit breweries and distilleries. However, with plateauing commodity prices, increased out-of-home consumption, and select state governments reducing taxes, analysts believe the worst may be over for the sector. Our next report dives into how the Ukraine-Russia war has impacted the sector. And whether investors should begin nibbling related stocks after the recent correction. The war-torn countries of Russia and Ukraine have stirred a food prices-led crisis across the world. Together, the two nations used to export nearly a third of the world's wheat and barley produce. key raw materials for liquor companies rice a third major raw material was also exported heavily by russia it was the world's 28th largest exporter of the commodity in 2020 with the two countries battling it out in eastern europe prices of rice and barley have jumped around 15% and 59% respectively over the last 6 months On the bourses, shares of related companies have shed over 30% so far this calendar year. Among the lot, Radico Khetan, GM Breweries, and Global Spirits saw over 20% cuts. In comparison, the benchmark Nifty 50 index declined around 9% during the period. The fall came as soaring input costs put pressure on related companies' margin in Q4 of FY 2022. Individual companies saw EBITDA margin contraction of up to 800 basis points in the January March quarter with average contraction at around 200 to 250 bps. However, analysts believe the worst may be behind for the sector. Uh, yes, input cost has been going up, uh, but there is an expectation that uh, price increases will be granted by uh, you know some of the key states. there has been at least uh, uh, you know 8 to 12 uh, you know indicative measures uh, you know taken by multiple state governments like let's say rolling back of uh, tax increase or uh, you know reduction in uh, customs duty or reduction in the local levies for uh, you know imported uh, you know products or even uh, you know opening up uh, you know the 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 public controlled way of working to uh, you know private con- you know kind of private or op- private operated way which is all seen as progressive so collectively uh, if you look at uh, multiple actions by different states in different parts of india it does appear that uh, you know there is uh, finally the industry is actually finding uh, you know a lot of success for their positive lobbying efforts Amid these developments, Officers Choice Whisky Maker Allied Blenders and Distilleries Limited has filed documents with SEBI to raise 2000 crore rupees through an initial public offer. That said, most analysts recommend investors selectively buy these stocks from a medium to long term. Going forward as well, uh, at least in the near term, the outlook definitely does not look that uh, positive because of the inability to pass on the cost increase. and uh, moreover the risk of uh, hike in excise duty could also impact sentiments as well so yes in the near term at least for the next 6 months uh, uh, these these stocks could remain under pressure but from a long term perspective uh, uh, the sector has a pretty promising growth story with uh, premiumization picking up uh, uh, pace uh, that would help margins as well as profitability as well icici securities is bullish on united breweries Sher Khan on Global Spirits and Radico Khetan and HDFC Securities on United Breweries. Arey, mar gaya. Tum itna dar gaye? 
अब क्या किया शेयर्स में ट्रेडिंग तुम्हें फाइव पैसा नहीं पता ओए, अब तो सबको पता है फाइव पैसा पर मिलते हैं रिसर्च टूल्स पोर्टफोलियो एनालिटिक्स और इन्वेस्टमेंट आइडिया भी डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा ना अब तो सबको पता है इन्वेस्टिंग मेड इजी एंड रिपोर्टिंग विद फाइव पैसा इन्वेस्टमेंट इन सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल द रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुल बिफोर इन्वेस्टिंग Reserve Bank of India seems firm on implementing tokenization which is meant to make your debit and credit card transactions more secure whether you offload stocks on your laptop or purchase a shirt online the deadline to implement it has now been pushed by 3 months to September 30th after request from industry groups in our next four weeks explain what tokenization is On 24th of June, the Reserve Bank of India (RBI) extended the credit and debit card tokenization deadline by another three months. This is the third time that the central bank heeded the industry's request and extended the last date, which was 30th June. First RBI deadline to tokenization the card details was 30th June 2021. but at the request of merchants and payment aggregators as well as card companies and banks it was extended to 31st december 2021 the deadline was again extended by 6 months to 30th june 2022 and now it has been pushed to 30th september what happens in card transactions When you key in your card number, the information is saved by the merchant and payment gateway for future transactions. It is done to save your time and the hassle of punching in a 16-digit card number, which usually no one remembers. Your card details are stored by merchants online or in cloud systems. It is known as card on file or COF. But The central bank has been receiving complaints about data breaches. Although encrypted, card details of consumers stored with merchants are at risk of being compromised, which prompted the central bank to opt for tokenization. What happens in tokenization? According to RBI, tokenization is the replacement of actual card details with an alternative code called the token. which will be unique for a combination of card token requester and device token requester is the entity which accepts a request from the customer for tokenization of a card and passes it on to the card network to issue a corresponding token once created the tokenized card details will be used in place of the actual card number for online purchases initiated or instructed by the card holder RBI says that a tokenized card transaction is safer as the actual card details are not shared with the merchant during transaction processing. How tokenization is done? RBI says that the consumer can get the card tokenized by initiating a request on the app provided by the token requester. The token requester will forward the request to the card network which with the consent of the card issuer will issue a token. The customer's consent and OTP based authentication is needed for creating a token. However, it is not mandatory to tokenize cards. The central bank has given enough time to the industry to ensure that the transition to this new regime is smooth. So, one hopes that the deadline is not extended again and we switch to a more secure mode of transaction from 1st of October. Nation's trusted bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian. Most leading banks are ready for the switchover, but several merchants are still struggling, and they've said that the backend system is still not ready for the shift. That's all for today. For more news and analysis, please log into our website www.business-standard.com, and we'll also be back tomorrow morning with more. 
Stay tuned and thank you for watching. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.